Hey, true metal hearts, and uh, don't mind my uh, right wing rhetoric show in the background, Alex Jones. And, uh, anyway, aside from my uh, right wing constitutionalist rhetoric that I spew among my friends every day, let's talk about something less depressing music! Good music. And this is a band that I've had a special place in my heart since those uh, tumultuous teen years. Believer. And uh, this is, uh, Believer was one of the first batch of Christian bands that were playing the more thrash style. I mean, at this point in time, I could still count the Christian thrash metal bands on one hand. Vengeance Rising, uh, Deliverance, um, uh, The Crucified, uh, who else? Um, Believer, oh, we found another one, Martyr, okay, yeah, so that, and eventually I found more and more and more, but, and this is Believer, and of course, if uh, I'm sure the name is a dead giveaway of uh, what their ideology is, and um, I already did a video just on this album because it came before these two, and um, and you know finally I got these two, and you know like this one I've had them on cassette for years, still in a good pristine playable condition, believe it or not, and, uh, this is their first one, Extraction from Mental, Extraction from Mortality, and of course, you know, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you get the gist of it, you know, separated from the world, and free in him, and, uh, you had to be a metalhead and a Christian to really get them... This would kind of rub people in church the wrong way. Like, oh my god, what is that? Oh, it's a Christian band. No, it's not! Yeah, sorry, it's not Petra with clouds on the cover. But, um, there's really not a lot. There's no pictures in this one. Not like the other one, but, uh, you know, with the lyrics, and he tells his story of Believer and how they started. Originally, they were more like a melodic metal band, like a melodic power metal band, and then. You know, before they put their first up during their demo days, um, which I heard a couple tracks of, and that was on East Coast Metal, and then their first album proper, they just, you know, went total thrash, just total aggressive thrash. The vocals are more tame than the second album. The first off, if you can imagine, you know, a combination of Testament, Exodus, you know, Insert Bay Area Thrash here, you know, along with a, you know a little bit of Northeast Hardcore th Thrash thrown in. Um, you've got Believer and uh, and the vocals was like Gene Simmons singing for an extreme thrash band. Of course, the the, vocal, the uh, I mean, it would take all day to go through the different topics on the albums. And there's the pictures when they were in their twenties, and I was a Wide-eyed, impressionable kid in his early to mid in his early teens, and of course, you know they came from the state of Pennsylvania, and uh, actually, for a good while, um, Pennsylvania was almost like a cooking pot of awesome, you know, Christian metal bands were coming out of there: Sardonyx, uh, Sacraments. You know, I I, I got to know those guys, uh, watch my other videos, look up those bands I just mentioned, um, Thresher, there's one called Iron Wrath, and this is a band that just happened to get a proper album and get, you know, more attention, and a lot of attention, just good, straightforward, aggressive thrash, musically not the most original, and you know, unfortunately that's kind of the downside of a lot of the Christian metal coming out. There's the Christian version of this, the Christian version of that. They were just, like, musically, it was just mirroring what was going on in the, you know, non-Christian world. 
But, you know, later more bands came with their own sound and identity, like, you know, Tourniquet. Vengeance Rising was definitely distinct for their day. But, and, you know, more and more. And Believer, eventually, they became more distinct as they went along. You know, when they went to Believer, they definitely, when they went to Sanity Obscure, I mean, this is even more aggressive, technical, abrasive, angry thrash. With, you know, kind of like, you know, ecology-minded lyrics and, you know, fa apologetic type of lyrics. So very intelligent. Very intelligent. It wasn't, you know, just... Uh, you know, soapbox preaching. I mean, it's giving you really intelligent answers of why they believe what they believe. And uh, even more so on this one. This one, the vocals were like Voivod, if you can, like the first Voivod. Like, some of my friends complained. My Christian friends at the time said they didn't like the vocals that on this album because it's not, he said that, you know, Kurt Bachman sounds like. He was on the toilet, but I was the kind of guy, you know, or kid, always, you know, the more aggressive, the more abrasive, the vocals are dreary and horrible. I just loved it. Yeah! <laughs> and also, this was like the bridge to the death metal era, because you could see how, it was, you know, it was getting more aggressive, the, the, the vocals were getting more gruff and... and <laughs> And, uh, this one came out my senior year of high school. Believer Dimensions. And this is, again, the first time I've ever had it on CD. Uh, on one song here, they had, like, an experimental neoclassical operatic song called DS Ray, like, opera metal, but it was just one track. Here, it's like, it's the majority of the album. Here they even delve more into, uh, you know, cellos and violins, and which pretty much was like a precursor of what the metal scene throughout the rest of the 90s would, especially, you know, when you had like, you know, the big barrage of art artistic, uh, atmospheric dooms coming, bands coming out of Europe. You know, they're using violins, female opera singers, again, you know, like apologetic style lyrics, which is... You know, instead of just, you know, soapbox preaching at you, just, again, you know, very intelligent, articulate, you know, views of, you know, why they believe what they believe. And probably my least favorite, I mean, I liked it when I got it at the time, but then it got old on me, and I filed it, and my cassette, the cover is different than the original release on Rex Records back in, uh, I believe, 92 or 93. Or did they release it in 92? I can't remember. But, uh... And then, you know, after this, they broke up and they went on hiatus. But that's not the end of the story. Also, on the way, hopefully, you know, we'll arrive in the mail next month. I ordered their latest releases that they did lately, since they got back together, Transhuman and Angel Gabriel. I have, still have no idea what those albums sound like, but I got those, you know, their latest ones just, you know, hey, I liked them, you know, way back when, and, oh, they're putting stuff out now. Yeah, I got to check it out, and uh, I guess it was like a blind fan for But uh, these are good. If you like just straight-up aggressive, brutal thrash, these two, these two are excellent, especially this one. This one was actually released on RC Records which is like, you know, Metal Blade's, you know, rival at the time as far as putting out good quality heavy bands. This one might be an acquired taste, and you probably have already been a fan of Believer if you got this album. <clears throat> Again, you know, violins and cellos, and of course, you know, this is when more bands were cutting their hair and looking more tame. Then Mortification came along, and uh, check my other videos for that one. And uh, yeah, this is it, Believer. You know, for the you know late 80s, early 90s era of extreme, righteous metal. Hey, thanks for watching Joe's Record Store. Stay away from lame music. <laughs>